Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, good morning to everybody that's listening to this episode. You're going to be glad that you tuned in to Hello Self, because do I have a guest that you're going to learn a lot from and be inspired. I am Patricia Leonard, your host, and I'm a coach and a speaker and uh, just a little bit of everything. I like to try it all in life. Every time I get a nudge, I go in a new direction. (laughs) But it always comes back to the same place that my whole goal in life is to enhance the quality of life of, of others. And what I say to you is it's time to get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and Turn those cans into cans and your dreams into plans. And that is the whole goal of Hello Self podcast and my book that's on Amazon. So thank you so much. And I just want you to be inspired and find some things that might just might, might be nudges to take you in the direction of where you're going next. So Before I get into the details of all this, I want to introduce my guest and thank him for being here. Dwayne Curtis is here with us today. And Dwayne, say hi. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Hello. Glad you're here. Thank you so much. And you're going to learn a lot from Dwayne. There's, um, I want to tell you a little story about him before we go into the business side and the the human side of how he got where he is today in his career and life. First of all, Dwayne is my neighbor. (laughs) And actually, we didn't know each other except a hello, a wave as we drove by. And he lives right across the street from me. But this is an example of here we are today doing this podcast. And this is an example of how life happens if we pay attention and if we look at the little nudges. There was, um, you know, he was a neighbor. That's all I could say. He was a neighbor. And then um, he became a friend. And then I met his little grandson, Cameron, who stole my heart. And, um, oh my gosh. And then I love the humanness of who Dwayne was. And I got to know his wife. So it's funny how we got to this podcast. One day, Dwayne said, I I just had to come over and see if everything was okay. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, you know, I've just been thinking about you. And I just had a nudge that I hadn't seen you for a long time. And I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. Those are the kind of moments, the hello self moments. That was a different one. That's seeing your neighbor or, but it's following those nudges. And I would say to the audience, follow your nudges. And Dwayne's going to show you a lot of how that shifted his life in different ways and brought him to where he is today. There's just one more story I have to tell. This is funny. I got up this morning and I've been fighting this sinus thing, Tennessee, you know. <laughs> and um, so I got a Hall's cough drop before I came into the studio to do this podcast. But you know what? This is a, this is interesting. This is how our life goes. It's wrapped in a little paper wrapper. And I took out the cherry flavored cough drop and I never had paid attention before, but this little wrapping that it's in has something on there. And I was saying, what are, what's this writing on there? Listen to this. And this will prove to you that in every moment and in every story, there are many gifts. Listen to this. Get back in there, champ. Look at that. Uh, Here's another one. Keep your chin up. 
Wow. Okay, another one. Power through. And another one. You can do it and you know it. I mean, on a wrapper from Hall's <laughs> Candy or Hall's Cough Drop. Yes. You see how we miss life if we're not paying attention. And I have unwrapped these before and had not paid attention. But today, for some reason, there was a reason I was supposed to read this. And I just hope it makes a difference in your life. Okay, that's a couple of stories for me. Now, okay. I'm going to give you a little bit more about Dwayne, his career specifically. I told you a little bit about who he is as a human being, but he'll add more to that. But I'm just going to give you some of the briefs from his resume that he shared with me. He's He's got a background in general operations, specifically in the hospitality industry. Customer experience champion. He's been given awards for all of this. Team leadership development. Acknowledged for developing teams that produce quality and efficiency. So process efficiency, budget management. These are some of the things that he's been responsible for in his career journey. And then I like this a lot because this is a great tool out in the marketplace today is startup operations, whether it's a big corporation, whether it's an entrepreneur wanting to get in business, startup operations, and then overall his business administration um, background in school. So what I'd like to do now is just turn it over to Dwayne to tell us his story from a Hello Self point of view or however he decides where he's from, but you're going to be in for a treat, so pay attention. Okay, <laughs> Dwayne. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Thanks for that introduction. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you and I spoke not long ago, and I was extremely excited, you know, when you told me and shared with me that you just finished a book, and your next adventure was a podcast, you know, and would I possibly um, consider this? Um, for me, it was a no-brainer. You know, um, yes, yeah, still you advise and you say, hey, maybe talk with Evangela about it, my wife, um, which I did, you know, but I say, you know, this is something that i um, definitely looking forward to, you know, which came from um, a conversation you and I had that I also will share a little bit later. So I'm excited um, to be here. But a little bit more, just elaborate on, you know, some of my background as you shared. Um, New Orleans, Louisiana is home for me, you know, New Orleans. So many of us know who may have had a chance to visit New Orleans. Um, it's a hospitality city you know, very strong, you know, in um, the tourist market, you know, many love to come and enjoy the food, the music, you know, um, just a very unique um, city, you know, which I love, deeply love. Been now in Tennessee, you know, moved here with the family um, for work. But prior to moving here, and even in my time of being in New Orleans, I got introduced to the hospitality industry through high school. So I had a chance, uh, I was part of a program. It was the beginning of a program. It was a startup, you know, something um, new to the school. And it was maybe, I believe it was five, five students were selected um, to participate in this program. And my senior year, we went to school for a half day and we went to work at um, different hotels downtown. Um, New Orleans a half a day. So that was my introduction, you know, to um, hospitality industry. Uh, from there, fell in love with the industry, you know, then. Um, so I went to school, um, was in college, you know, in New Orleans, and returned back to the hotel that I worked prior to um, graduating, you know, from high school. So I worked there, and that was my true full-time introduction to the industry um, prior to, you know, working um, half a day for school and then, you know, part of a program, um, which was a little different because my first job was called a banquet house person. And that job is responsible for setting up tables and chairs for meeting space. And I just recall uh, my first, it was overnight shift, you know, 11 at night to seven in the morning. Uh, my wife and I go to bed early. I've always been someone that's been disciplined and getting sleep, getting rest and, and going to school. Uh, and that was a different shift, you know? So I said, oh my goodness, I'm not sure if this is for me, you know, but I was able to get in, um, prove myself, and soon I was able to, to change shifts, which was a huge help, you know, while I finished school. 
Um, so I finished school, worked uh, as a banquet house attendant, and then I transferred into bailment. So that allowed me to become now introduced to what we call the, more of a guest service experience uh, because it's assisting guests, you know, understanding the a uh, little bit more of what we may call a little more guest interaction um, from the bailment's perspective. So that was pretty good. Finished school and was promoted to uh, my first entry level manager position. Um, downtown New Orleans. So again, great experience. Mm-hmm. Loved it. You know, all everything we do, I feel, you know, serves a purpose in our life. Um, so I worked at market uh, from an assistant, uh, from a manager to an assistant exec housekeeper to a housekeeper, uh, executive housekeeper as well, before moving into the casino environment. So I started working in Mississippi um, and I had a very um, long, interesting title. Uh, when I moved into that environment, it was the executive director of housekeeping. <laughs> so it sounded very interesting, you know, so that was uh, something I did up to Hurricane Katrina. So I worked in that environment before Hurricane Katrina hit 2005, which changed a lot for myself and many. Um, but again, for me, things happen um, that we most time can benefit from, you know, and it allowed me to benefit from gaining that experience. And I moved into a different um, type of job. You know, after that, I ended up in Baton Rouge with my family, worked for LSU um, in an area that was called a department that was called facility management. And we were responsible for overall maintenance of the university, completely different from the hospitality industry. Um, So very unique, very interesting Um, to me, worked in the evening. Um, I had a golf cart assigned to me, you know, so I was able to drive around campus because we had teams in different buildings. So that was the most efficient way to get around campus. Right. So that was unique within itself. And LSU, you know, if you haven't had a chance to visit beautiful campus, um, really enjoy that job, you know, as well. Um, so I assume about a year and a half later, I received a call from a friend of mine that I worked with in Mississippi. Um, he was he was my partner, uh, my assistant. We worked in Mississippi prior to the hurricane. And he reached out and told me about a great opportunity in Nashville, Tennessee. So this allowed me to get back into the industry. Um, Was a little nervous initially, you know, because this property in Nashville has almost 2,900 rooms, 2,900 rooms, which is huge, you know, in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, on average, small hotels, you know, maybe, you know, somewhere around 200 up to 200, 300 rooms. You know, you get into your midsize for 500, um, but large on a large scale, it's typically maybe 1,200, 1,500, maybe up to 2,000, not almost, not almost 3,000 on property. So very unique um, in recognizing this opportunity that I had, you know, so again, speaking to my wife about it, we felt it was a great opportunity, you know, for us, uh, my wife, myself, and my two daughters. So we decided to move to Nashville. Didn't know a whole lot about Tennessee, definitely didn't know much about Nashville, you know, at the time. And now it's been 15 years, fast forward. Been here 15 years now. Um, and again, I just learned so much from that property that I worked at that provided me a very unique skill set um, that helped me. Because again, you know, you have to learn how to operate in a large, high capacity environment, um, having 350 plus um, team members, you know, within the department and being responsible for, for every aspect, you know, of the operation. You know, that included, you know, all the housekeeping team, laundry, public areas. Um, This particular property had almost 600,000 square feet of meeting space. So extremely large, you know, Nashville, Tennessee. So allow me again to develop a very unique skill set. Again, that as we move through life, you know, things happen for a reason. We just sometimes have to pause and reflect back on what did I gain from that opportunity? And then how do I continue to push forward and um, gain and continue to grow on top of that opportunity? So now realizing that I had an opportunity, a friend of mine called and said, hey, there's a new company, um, it's called Make Ready, which is a company I work for today. Make Ready and not not sure if you're interested in um, making a change, because at this time I've been at the property uh, about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So being at the property so long, you know, really understood the systems, understood the processes and overall, you know, my team and I, we were doing well, you know, so we developed a great team, knowing that I definitely was supported by a great team. And that was a very tough decision, you know, primarily because of the people side. But talking to the senior vice president, you know, of the company for the operation, spoke with him and understood 
um, the goal, you know, of this pr- pretty much a startup company on the hotel operations side, and it opened in the hotel downtown Nashville. Um, at that time, Nashville was classified as underdeveloped for boutique style hotels. Mm-hmm. So looking through my resume and kind of reflecting back on my experience, I didn't have um, a lot of luxury or boutique type of experience. So that was something else I knew I could gain, you know, from taking advantage of this opportunity. Um, also going into this um, smaller property, you know, which was um, 225 rooms, roughly. It also was going to allow me an opportunity because of being a startup to develop a lot. You know, so we would have to come in, look at processes, look at procedures, um, develop people, mm-hmm. you know, which is something that I'm very passionate about. And if we're successful, this could put me in a different category, a different position with this company as they grow because I'm at the beginning. This is the first property they were hiring for. So that was a very unique opportunity that I recognized. Um, you know, in making a decision. So again, speaking to my wife, we decided that this is a great opportunity. Um, Let's make this decision. And as of August of this year, I made five years with this company. Um, So I started off as the director of housekeeping, um, was promoted within about six months to director rooms. Um, So in that role, responsible for front desk, uh, um, bellman, valet, um, housekeeping, public areas. And then just recently, as of early this year, um, Q1 of this year, I was promoted to senior director of hotel operations. Bravo. So throughout, yeah, so throughout my five years of work with the company, um, they were able to allow me the opportunity, which I'm extremely thankful for, um, to help on task force type projects, you know, being able to go and assist other properties as we have grown now, you know, from one property quickly within uh, maybe about a year, um, three properties. And now, you know, we have um, eight um, hotels, you know, within our portfolio instead of growing. Now the pandemic, of course, slowed a lot of businesses down, impacted us the same, but now we're back on track, you know, with the projected growth. You know, so this is something that was um, um, something I personally, you know, had prayed about, you know, and this is something that was very important for me because I understand and recognize how I like to be challenged and where my passion is. So it was very important to try to understand what can offer me that opportunity. And today, again, I'm thankful because the company Make Ready aligns to who I am as a person, what I believe in um, as far as my values, and truly believe in creating an environment where people are important and valued. You know, it's too often that it is said, but a lot of companies may not show that in their actions. Um, but again, so for me, it was about trying to find a company that also aligns with what I believe in as a person, you know, and that's what I found. It's funny because one of our guiding principles um, that we have is people over processes, you know. So with certain companies, you know, you establish processes, uh, processes within the organization and very important. You must have them. Um, but sometimes everything is not black and white. You know, sometimes you may have to understand a situation, understand a person and then make the best decision for that situation and that person. Mm -hmm. And this company now allow us to do that and not only allow us, this is part of our guiding principle. So it's important that we do that, Mm -hmm. you know, so, so that's something that helped me to continue to reflect back and appreciate um, the position that I'm in, you know, today. So it's kind of just a quick run through of, you know, where I've been and where I am today. Um, So currently uh, we have a property we just started managing in Houston. Um, So provide me an opportunity to travel a little bit more than I did before. So I've been helping the team and continue to help the team. And we're working on opening um, our next property in April of 2023 in Columbus, Ohio. Um, So kind of switching to working toward a new bill. So that'd be a brand new hotel where the one in Houston is an existing hotel. So very different in how we approach an acquisition versus a new build, uh, but very unique uh, opportunities to continue to develop a skill set and um, just excites me each day, you know, just being able yes. to think back to where I came from and something that I know of interest to me and my passion, you know, to help others while I continue to feel like I'm being challenged as well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and now you're you're doing a consulting kind of role uh, with the uh, entities that are starting up or the operations. And uh, 
I, I, I love your journey that you just shared because you, you talked about, I like a challenge. And so one of the things that's very clear to our audience listening today is understand that what you want and what you value is going to take you a long way in making a decision about, is this for me? So if you're standing on the corner of, where do I go from here? The first thing to do is look inside yourself. And just like Dwayne has been telling you, and I love the partnership that you spoke about with you and your wife, because everybody needs um, someone that pushes them along a little or works with them a little or helps them open up a bigger view. And I like that a lot. So I would say that one of the gifts that you just gave our audience is look for someone in your family or someone that you know professionally who can kind of help you think about these things when you have choices of going to a new job or moving to a new town or wanting to start your own business. Talk to somebody that has started their own business. I like, um, I also love something that you were saying, and I think we had briefly talked about it before, but high school opportunities, are they doing more in high schools to give people real life experience now? Uh, I know it it slowed down quite a bit at some point. Um, And from my understanding, the program that I was a part of, um, the high school that I attended, um, just return the program. So I just found this out two weeks Fantastic. ago. Fantastic. Yeah. So um, so I'm really excited. And again, Patricia, I have to thank you because you really sparked this, this thought in me. Um, and especially after reading, you know, Hello Self, it motivated me to see how to put a plan together. Mm-hmm. And for me, like most time, if I commit to something, even if I commit it to myself and write it on paper, you know, I'm committing something, you know, so I really work hard toward achieving that. Um, so now, you know, I'm reaching out I reached out to the high school, you know, to see what partnership and how I can support it, um, as well as working on another project um, just with the company. And, uh, you know, we may talk about a little bit later with the company I work for. Um, we have a diversity um, group that I'm a part of, and we're looking to expand a partnership and there's a, a college program of students that's part of a hospitality program that we look to create a partnership uh, in the near future. You know, so now I'm spearheading that. And the goal is to try to create this partnership this year, you know, before the end of um, before December um, 2022 and create this strong partnership. So we can also help encourage, you know, um, college students um, to be more exposed to the industry while also developing a program within our company to help and develop them, you know, based off their skill sets or how they would like to grow. Oh, my goodness. That is, you see, uh, this is, I mean, when we go to college, it's about a brain stuff. Then people get out. I've been coaching for over 30 years, and I hired directly out of, when I was in corporate America, I hired directly out of universities. And what I had to do in the human resource, I had to expose them to experience in there, and it took about a year. So Uh when you create programs like this, Young people or seniors or whoever are going to college, it doesn't matter because we've got a very diverse college group anymore. But whether it's in high school, it helps people and young kids start to find a, a road for themselves. Doesn't mean that's where they'll end up, but it simply empowers them or inspires them to say, I want to do this. Just like one of the ladies that I interviewed on um, Hello Self, in high school, she discovered that she wanted to be um, develop tele- social media kind of thing. She bought a camera. It's little steps like that. It's not a big thing. And I think what we do to a lot of young people is, and we do this to coaches. Coaches do this too. I am... I. Oh, The processes we use sometimes just uh, really make me mad. But coaches uh, take you on this journey instead of letting the client, the customer, the student take them on their journey. And that's why Hello Self is so important is to wake up that sleeping magician, if you will, within each person. And I think, oh, I love what you're doing 
And not only that, what you do with your staff is to give them, empower them. Uh, yes. What you're doing in schools is saying, you see, you can do this. It's no big deal. You know the governor of Tennessee. I don't personally know him, but I do know that he owned a business before he became governor. And I do know that one of his commitments, and he started school for skilled trades workers, and then he would pay them in his business, but they went out into the world and they were getting good money. And they were people who had not gone to college, did not think they had a future. And he set up systems to help them take that next step. And that's all we need. And I don't care, even I interview a lot of seniors. It doesn't matter. They don't know, at, it doesn't matter if you're 50, and your soul is saying, let me express who I am. You've held me down. One of my first books was um, Wearing High Heels in a Flip-Flop World. It's not about high heels at all. It's getting out of your comfort zone. And that's what you're doing. You're taking, uh, you could stay in, yes, hospitality. And that is it. But it doesn't mean that you can't take that industry and now create a new path, which you're doing. I'm so excited about that. And I really love that. And it helps them find a purpose in life. So we don't have these issues that we've got today that we're dealing with. Yes, yes. Because even the issues we're dealing with, you know, one of the things I think about very often is how do we just create, you know, more ownership, you know, in what we do, you know, accountability, right? And I think back to Hello Self, you use a quote in a book, it was from um, Tim McGraw, you know, and it stated that, you know, um, taking ownership, you know, is the first step in creating a different kind of relationship with yourself, you know? So if you take ownership and understand who you are, you then I feel can start explaining and maybe having clarity to what your why is. Yes. So carry through on what my why is, you know? And this is something that, I now often use with my daughters, you know, so as you know, I, you know, I have two daughters. Yeah. Um, one of my daughters um, teaches, you know, grade school and my youngest daughter, you know, just got into what we call her professional um, and her adult job now, you know, so <laughs> she, she's, she's working three jobs. So she has a full time job. Um, she works in the hotel industry on weekends, Saturday, and Sunday, um, and then she has like a freelance job. So, you know, working, staying busy, like to stay busy, loves to challenge herself. And I'm extremely proud, you know, both my daughters. Um, but it's also for me to help understand why, you know, because you can get into this work world and just we need to stay busy. You know, we constantly looking at the phones. There's so much that we do that we feel like we have to do something each second of the day that as we make this progress in life, we have to understand the why. What motivates us? What's our passion? So why do I do what I do? So you mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, about my grandson that, um, I feel in life, you know, our why changes, you know, so sometimes you have to continue to reflect back on what's my why, you know, what's my why today, because my why today is a little different than my why 10 years ago, you know, or maybe 20 years ago, you know, our focus was, um, you know, getting our daughters through school, you know, making sure that they get through college, um, assisting with that. They both graduated um, and very proud that each of my daughters have their master's degrees and now the independent, you know, young ladies. And now I'm being able to spend this time with my grandson, you know, I have a new why, you know, um, that's new. You know, my grandson is three, you know, so that why has helped change. And what's more important in life, the quality of time with family um, and spending time with him, you know, so being able to define and when you showed me, you gave me the book. I told you, you know, thank you for the book. You know, I had to buy another one because my wife and I were fighting over trying to read one book. So we had to go, you know, purchase a second you know, um, book, you know, and now purchase books for my daughters and like to continue to help others to read it and explain their why and understand their self and what's the purpose, you know, because again, it's just such great information that helped me, you know, even at this point in my career, think of what's my new why. You know, what am I doing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? I knew I always knew I had a passion for people and helping to develop people, but didn't necessarily consider what's that next step. You know, so I believe in speaking with you. Um, I'll just kind of, as you mentioned, kind of say hello, neighbor. And I believe at that time, that conversation probably carried on for like 45 minutes, you know, and exactly for me, right. it's <laughs> inspired 
um, that particular day, just thinking of things that was in the back of my mind that you helped me to bring it to the forefront and then get it to paper, you know, so I can start really working on a lot of things that I thought about. And for whatever reason, whatever it is that created that moment that I feel was intentional, it was planned for you and I, you know, to see each other this particular day, that um, it was meant because this helped me to consider how do I get a little bit more clarity, which that served the purpose. And now I'm moving forward with those ideas that was maybe kind of in the back of my mind and just a thought and now creating it into action. Yeah, what I really like about what you're saying is it's never a one-way street. Like you say, you've learned. But one of the things for me is that I love to find out more about what causes people to be who they are. And it caused me to investigate a little bit more. Who is Dwayne? And I had just let him be a neighbor. But I have to tell you something. Believe these kind of things or not, it doesn't matter. But while Dwayne and I had that 45-minute conversation, there was a yellow butterfly that kept (laughs) flying in. You remember? Yes, I do. It kept flying in and out all around us, just buzzing. It would not leave us alone. So I came home and Googled, what does a yellow butterfly mean? Because I pay attention, just like with a Hall's cough (laughs) drop. But I started paying attention. And it meant good fortune, good future, good things coming. And so I just said, I like that. And who knows where uh, conversations like this takes us. Um, But I do know that our intention is, is to help both of us, is to help others. And my sense is, is to get people that are your neighbor, like Dwayne, my neighbor, is get them out there so the world can see that we have real people with real focuses, with real cares that have stories that can help us so much in our um, life. And it doesn't have to mean it's a journey. We can plan. I always say, I even say this in the book, we can put all kinds of plans together and life happens because people come into your life or Uh, Your daughters come along and yes, they are beautiful young ladies too, but they come along and they shift us for a moment. And then I saw Dwayne in a photograph with he and Cameron, his grandson at a business event. And I thought, look what he's doing. Are you exposing your children or your neighbor's children? What are you doing Uh, to help others on their journey. And I think that is one of the things about Hello Self. It's causing us to wake up and pay attention. And, you know, I was at Lowe's the other, or Home Depot the other day. And, uh, oh my gosh, I'm full of stories. You got to shut me down. But um, (laughs) I was getting some stain for my patio. And I had a um, stain that I had bought there a couple of years ago but they had forgotten to put the color in. And I took it back and he said, well, we don't have that brand anymore. And I said, well, can you put the color in for me? I'll pay you for that. He spent, and this is what I really, really liked. He spent 20 minutes going back and coding that color that was on the other can that I had purchased from Home Depot a couple of, from, um, yeah, Home Depot a couple of years ago. He went back and he said, do you think this is good, Miss Leonard? And I said, it looks perfect to me. And I said, who's going to get down and check the paint numbers on my patio? (laughs) Well, this is what happened. On the way out, a nudge hit me. And these are the moments that you must pay attention to because they're for you and they're for others. And um, I said, how will anybody know that what Troy did was so appreciated and he went way above and beyond and so as I was walking out a young associate came up to me and said did you get everything I said yes I got everything I needed and more and I said is the manager here and she said no but the the assistant manager is but he's out to lunch right now and I said could I have his number Um, I want to give Troy uh, an acknowledgement she said here's a sticky note 
write it on there and then put your name and your telephone number down. So I did. And I said, here's what I what happened. Would you believe that was about four o'clock in the afternoon and seven o'clock that night, the assistant manager called. That assistant manager is a Dwayne Curtis taking the time to, and this is what you need to become because if you give it away, you will receive it triple fold. So uh, remember the things that Dwayne is telling you about personal values. Because I think that's so important. What do you believe in? What are your processes? What is the why to you? And um, challenge yourself. You know, he, he came to Tennessee and left Louisiana, his Mississippi and Louisiana, where he is. So we have to challenge ourselves sometimes. And I love where he's think he's going now is teaching others. Is there any more you want to say about that, Dwayne, or anything as we start to wrap up? I'm just very excited, you know, and again, you know, I, I understand and know your position, but I have to say this, you know, I, I really thank you for that nudge. Thank you for conversation, you know, and thank you for even introducing me to the book. You know, it did allow me the opportunity um, to really, again, as I mentioned earlier, get clarity, you know, to some thoughts I had, you know, I've always been exactly. very interested in thinking back to my home city, you know, New Orleans, and how the young generation today, you know, could use some help and some guidance, mm -hmm. you know, so if it's individuals who may not have ever thought of the hospitality industry, this could be a great opportunity that could provide, you know, um, something unique for them, you know, mm -hmm. and hopefully help them to grow in something that could hopefully become a career, you know, that some may not have thought of. Mm -hmm. And Dwayne, you know, one thing, when you do this in schools, one of the things they're going to have to look at are what skills do you have? And this is one thing that I tell a lot of my young people. If you're going to apply for a job and somebody says, do you have in background industry and hospitality? Don't say no. We should never say no. Uh, I had a woman that was going in healthcare, a, a mature woman. And she said, no, I really don't have a background in healthcare. The, the whole thing is you may not have a background in industry, but just as you have done, all of your skills have been transferable. Even when you worked in a university and you stepped up and said, I haven't done this to yourself, but you tried, you stepped in and did it and did an excellent job. So I would say, uh, you know what, if if they ask some of your students, do you have background in hospitality? Yes, I do. Here's some things that I have done in school. I have, uh, when new, new uh, classmates have moved in or new neighbors, I've helped them get integrated into the school. When we started a softball team, I'm just making these up. But these are all hospitality moments, customer experience. And if you've gone to a, had a party, a birthday party, and helped everybody, a shy person over in the corner, those are hospitality. And this is what I try to tell my clients is you've got the skills. You have to identify them and then get a story around them. Every skill you've got that I mentioned, Dwayne, is transferable to any industry. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Totally. Totally agree. So we've got the skills. We get caught in this culture and this society language that says, oh, no, this is where you go. Oh, no, you couldn't be a human resource person because you don't have the background. And listen. I've talked to people all my life. I've I played on softball teams. I've done so we have to reframe it because our culture is so ingrained and our hiring processes are so ingrained. So let your students know this that yes, you've got experience. I had a person that said to me, I asked if they had leadership experience or manage supervisory. No. But I did work at um, uh, McDonald's and sometimes when the manager was gone, he would have me or she would have me sit. That's management skills. 
<laughs> you didn't have the title, but you don't. Do you see what? And this is why I'm so excited about what you're doing. I'm I just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to free up a generation that basically they're kind of lost, Dwayne. And that's our goal. We, we must help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really appreciate this. Now, um, how could you have a website or how can people get to know you, business people, or let's say somebody wanted you to consult on their <laughs> startup or to coach them? You could coach people right now, coach young people. You've done it with your daughters and you've done it in your business. Is there anything, and your wife has education background, so is there, would you like to leave your email or um, anything about you with the people, and would you be open to them contacting you if they wanted to? Yes, absolutely. Um, you, you've kind of created, I need to make notes whenever I speak with you, you know, because now it's time to set up, you know, some type of website <laughs> uh, as well. But for now, even I universities, think, they need to know how they can get a hold of you to bring their yes. program into their university. Yes, so absolutely. So today, the best way to contact me is through uh, my personal email address, um, which is Curtis, C-U-R-T-I-S dot D-W-A-I-N M at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. That's Curtis dot Dwayne M at gmail.com. Do you want to give them any phone numbers or do you not want to? No, you don't have to do anything like that. You can always yeah. call me and I'll, <laughs> I'll go across the street and tell him. <laughs> yeah, email email would be best. So let's, yeah, if there's any okay. way, especially along the path, um, as I share, you know, what my passion is, yes. um, we'd love to hear and, and see how we can continue to grow this. Um, and with focus on, our generation, you know, that that's coming, you know, our younger generation, you know, to see how do we help them as much as we can, especially yeah. expose them to industries that can give them hope and hopefully develop careers. And if anybody out there wants to talk to Dwayne more about partnering up with him in some of these endeavors, give him a call. You don't know. He may say, no, I'm not ready for that. But if you've got something to offer that could really add value to his goals and dreams for the next five years, then he'll at least talk to you. So we just need to step up. And that's what Dwayne said when he was offered this uh, college uh, opportunity. And then when he was offered coming to Tennessee, it hadn't been part of his plan, but he said, yeah, I think I'll do that. It's a great opportunity. So yes. I think, um, and I just want to reiterate some of the things. Remember, stepping up and challenging yourself, finding out what your own values are, getting to know yourself, and being able to market yourself. He has talked to these things and come up with new ideas. Even within the business you're working in now, even if you don't have a big title, it doesn't matter. Say, you've got an idea. I remember when I was at a corporation, I had this idea. We were paying $50,000 um, for consultants, Stephen Covey won, to come in. And I said to the leadership, I said, I got an idea. Let's, let's tr uh, create our own internal consulting firm. And they let me do it. And I created, and we had 13 by the time I left, using our internal resources to do consulting. Well, um, General Electric, who, who was the president, Jack? Um, I can't think of, but that's exactly what he did. And he sold the services out of, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, you've got, you've got everything you need. Just realize it, step up and talk to somebody about it and get out of your comfort zone. So thank you so much. Dwayne Curtis, I am so grateful you were here, and I even love you more. You're you're uh, a fabulous man, and I love your mission in life. And um, so, if you've got a mission or a goal, just step up and talk to somebody about it. It is not impossible to do it, and you'll be surprised. Or if you get a nudge, like the halls thing, <laughs> if you get a nudge, just go do something. Just do something about it. Don't keep it inside and say, I couldn't do that. I'm too old. I don't have the money. 
those things don't, they're just cop-outs and they do not um, get you to what you want in life. Life's a journey and the way you wrap it is your choice. I just like to say, signing out, I'm Patricia Leonard, your host on Hello Self Podcast. And you can see these on Business Nashville Radio X. And I'm getting my own site set up as we talk. And I'll be getting this out to anybody that's interested. And subscribe so you can hear more things like this. We want to keep you motivated. The very last thing I have to say is, Keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming.